This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God's doing a work in you right now. God is doing a work in you. You might not even like yourself right now, but God's doing a work in you right now. I mean, it just blows my mind that God is working in me. A lot of Christians don't see it that way. That way, they see, you know, let me do the relig- let me do the religious activity. They're just constantly looking for the activity they can do and all the activity. But I'm telling you, God is working in you. Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar. Get ready to receive real life resolution from raw and uncut messages at the 2021 Mentality Conference. Register now by texting MENTALITY to 51555 or by visiting CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 in the uh, New Living Translation. And uh, tonight we're going to continue from last week. We're going to talk about godly character. We're going to talk about godly character. Now, I, I want to start off with the same phrase that we looked at last uh, week, the fact that nobody will ever go beyond their character. And that's so important. It's been said that you will never go above the character you possess. So if you're questioning yourself and you're asking, why haven't I reached a certain level in my life? Why haven't I been able to accomplish certain things in my life? It's simply because you can't go above your character. And until you're willing to look at your character and check out what kind of character you have, the level of your character will determine the level of your uh, success. It'll determine uh, your destiny. Your, Your character will determine your outcome. And so if you're wondering what's happening, it, it may be a character issue that you need to begin to look at and deal with. And so it, it's an important thing for us to check out. So last week, here's how we define character. Character is doing what's right. Now, that's ultimately it. It's, it, it, it character is always the, uh, the action in the story. Character is doing what's right because it's right and then doing it right. It's doing what's right because it's right, and doing it right. Character is doing what's right. We also said that character is what people have come to expect from you. So the actions that you demonstrate and the things that you do where your character is concerned is what people will come to expect from you. We said also that a person's character is the sum of his or her disposition, thoughts, intentions, desires, and action. One of the other things I want to make sure I bring up again is that character is shown in how you deal with things. Character is shown with how you deal with things. And and, and remember this, character can be demonstrated um, when nobody's looking. It's not, you know, you can polish yourself up when you know people are watching you, but when nobody's looking, will you have the right character? Character is something that you hold fast to inside and that people see on the outside. Now, we're going to deal with godly character tonight. And uh, as we get into this, it'll really bless you because I believe that character in the life of a believer, character in our lives, character in the lives of people who've made Jesus the Lord of their life, it is a consistent manifestation of Jesus in our lives. Character in the life of the believer is a consistent 
manifestation of Jesus in our lives. And so that's so very important. So let's begin this because our Christian character can be summed up by the fruit of the Spirit. Our Christian character can be summed up by the fruit of the Spirit. And so I'm going to take you to some things tonight that, that I think will really challenge you. So let's look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23 in the New Living Translations. He says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and there's no law against these things. Now, here's what I noticed, verse 22. I want you to pick this up, and this is so very important. He says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. So the first thing I want you to get a hold of is this fruit is produced by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. I, I want to bring this point up tonight because it's not you uh, getting into your own performance and coming up with your own self-effort plan to try to produce the fruit of the Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, produces this fruit. And so let's look at a couple of words. It, th this word fruit is important. Why did, why did the Apostle Paul, why did, they, why did he come up with using the word fruit here? Well, the Greek word translated fruit refers to the natural product of a living thing. So in the Greek, that word fruit, a natural product of a living thing. So in the New Testament, the word fruit is used to help us to understand the product of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And so he, that's the first thing we should get, the fact that this fruit is a product of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. So you, this, is, this is literally going to be the work of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is not going to be something that you manufacture out of your own self-effort. This is a product of the Holy Spirit. So I, I want you to just remember this statement. Let's, pu let's put it like this. The fruit of the Spirit is produced by the Spirit, not by the Christian. The fruit of the Spirit is produced by the Spirit and not by the Christian. I have met so many Christians who, uh, who are really struggling and working hard to try to manufacture something that they, that, that they don't, they don't, they don't produce. They're, they're not responsible for producing this. So even the, uh, the Greek word uh, is a singular word. It sh it's showing that fruit is a uh, unified whole and not an independent characteristic. We like to take the fruit of the Spirit and make it independent characteristics, but the, the very uh, root of that word is a unified whole. It's a unified whole. So as we mature and as we grow, I want you to write, write those two words down because I know you've got to be thinking, well, if I'm not going to be the one responsible for producing these things in my life, then, you know, how am I going to ever get it? How do I cooperate with the Holy Spirit? Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that's responsible for producing this product. So what do I need to do as a Christian to cooperate, kind of putting myself in a position so he can do that? I want to make sure I'm not doing something that, that challenges the product from being available in my life. And so these two words here, mature and grow, mature and grow. What do I need to do so that the, the product of the Holy Spirit can show up in my life? Mature and grow. As we mature and grow as Christians, all the characteristics of Christ will be manifested in our life as we begin to watch this mature and grow. Now, it's interesting to me how people like to define maturity and how they like to talk about spiritual growth. But we've got to stay within the context of the Scripture that um, what is it that it will be an evidence of your maturity? Well, it, I, I, I want to simplify it as much as possible. It's when you can start trusting in God and His finished works. You start trusting in God more than you trust in yourself. 
uh, spiritual maturity, uh, it's not and does not mean uh, or, or refer to how long you've been born again. Spiritual maturity is looking at this person who's born again, and now they are, they are growing in their trust where God is concerned. You know, Galatians talks about as long as you are under the law, you're nothing but a child. Even though you're an heir to a promise, you're nothing but a child because you're under the law. Well, under the law, it's about self-preservation. It's about your performance. It's about your self-effort. He says you're going to be a child as long as you're under the law and everything is about you and you're trusting yourself more than you trust God. To grow and to mature means now that you are growing away from self-preservation to God preservation. You are growing away from, you know, uh, self-dependence towards God dependence. And you measure your growth in how you move away from self and, and, and begin to grow in your confidence and in your in your, um, your trust where God is concerned. And so when we begin to do this, and I can, I can definitely see this now, when we begin to make our mind up to mature and to grow by moving into our trust and confidence for God, then the characteristics of Christ will be manifested in our lives and the more we grow to, uh, towards God dependence and trust towards God, the more the Holy Spirit's going to be able to work in our lives and see the product of the fruit of the Spirit show up in our lives. And so one of the things you have to recognize kind of dealing with fruit is that like physical fruit needs time to grow, the fruit of the Spirit needs time to grow as well. The fruit of the Spirit will need time to grow as well. It takes time to, to go from that trust in yourself to trust in God, uh, go from self-dependence uh, to God-dependence. And as you mature and grow, uh, then that fruit now begins to manifest and grow in your life, and it takes time to grow fruit in, in, in spiritual things, just like it takes time to grow fruit in physical, natural things. So, like a successful gardener, for example, he, is, he must fight the weeds he must fight against those weeds in order to enjoy the fruit uh, that he desires to show up in his garden. So likewise, we must constantly work and we must rid ourselves and rid our lives of the weeds of our old sinful nature that wants to choke out the work of the Spirit. Now, I want to I wanna reevaluate something I just said, that we must constantly work. Now, if you're, if, if you, if you're hearing as a child, what you're hearing is, I must constantly perform and do something and earn the right for the fruit to grow in my life. No, I want to stay in the context of the Word. If we will constantly work to keep the weeds out, well, how do, how do you constantly work to keep the weeds out? Well, you go to the definition in the New Testament of work. Look at this, John chapter 6 verse 29, let's look at the King James and the New Living Translation. And so this is important because we're talking about being successful gardeners spiritually so we can see the fruit that we want. Uh, and so we're going to have to constantly work to keep the weeds out of the way. Well, what is work? Well, Jesus answered and he said unto them, this is the work of God. All right, we're going to find out what we need to do to keep the weeds out of the way. This is the work of God, that you believe on him who he has sent. That's the work. You, you see, if I will spend my time believing on him and trusting him, that's going to keep the weeds of doubt out. That's going to keep the weeds of, of, of self-preservation out. If I'll do that. See, we're talking about spiritual things. And, and, and you can't just take what work means in the natural and then apply that same meaning to the spiritual. Work is a different definition when we come to spiritual things. Uh, look at what he says in, in John 6, 29 in the New Living Translation. He says, Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Wow, that's powerful. This is the only work God wants from you. What is that? Believe in the one he has sent. Believe in the one who he has sent. So our work where God is concerned is, is belief, 
trusting and believing and resting in who Jesus is and what he has been sent to do for us. Now, so that will help and stop the, 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 the weeds from choking out the production of the fruit that's in your life. I guarantee you, there are a lot of people who immediately thought, well, I got to keep the sin out of my life. I got to do that. Well, you've been trying to do that all, all your life. I, I'm talking about if you just believe God, that's how you keep the stuff out your life. If you'll start learning how to trust and rely and, and believe God, the weeds will be out and you'll, you'll start seeing the Holy Spirit producing, that's so powerful, producing the fruit of the Spirit in your life by believing Him and trusting Him. And that, that's how you keep the weeds out. How do you keep the weeds out? By believing Him, trusting Him. That's equivalent to maturing and growing. And you see the production of the fruit of the Spirit by the Holy Spirit taking place in your life. Now, let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 in the New Living Translation. The Holy Spirit gives us power. He gives us the power we need to reject those old sinful desires. The Holy Spirit does. He gives us the power that we need to reject those old sinful desires. Well, look what he says here. He says, for God is working in you. What is he doing? He is giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Again, this is God working in you. This is, this is not you taking it upon yourself through your own self-effort. This is God working in you, doing what? Ch taking away your old desires and giving you the new and the right desires. God doing work, what? He is taking away your old want-tos and giving you the new want-tos. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power. Power is the ability to get the job done. He'll give you the desire and the ability to do what pleases him. And so the Holy Spirit gives us the power we, we need to reject those old sinful dreams, keep it uh, dreams and desires and all that. It, it, that's an interesting thing that I would bring up, and I, I believe by the Holy Spirit just came out of my mouth, old sinful dreams. Sometimes the meditating on the wrong things will cause you to even meditate while you sleep. You know, the Bible says he'll give to you, he'll give to you uh, sweet sleep, or he literally will give to you while you are sleeping. You're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit? The work of the Holy Spirit can begin to do some things in you if you just learn how to believe and trust and cooperate with him and let him do the work. Now, wherever you are right now tonight, I want you to say this out loud. I am cooperating with the work of the Holy Spirit. Say that again. I am cooperating with the work of the Holy Spirit. God's doing a work in you right now. God is doing a work in you. You might not even like yourself right now, but God's doing a work in you right now. I mean, that just blows my mind that God is working in me. And a lot of Christians don't see it that way. That way, They see, you know, let me, do the religious, let me do the religious activity. They're just constantly looking for the activity they can do and all the activity. But I'm telling you, God is working in you. Certainly, you don't think you went from crazy to, to where you are right now by yourself. That's God working in you. He is doing the work and giving you the power to uh, change and changing your desires. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Well, I, I'm telling you, we can say no to sin and take God's way out by following the Holy Spirit's leading. We absolutely can do that. Uh, let's look at this in the, um, let's see, the, the New Living Translation right quick for sake of time. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. You can say no to sin. You can take God's way out because you know that the Holy Spirit is working in you. He says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, tested, or tried, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm just amazed the, that, that people really think it's their work that's getting them to that place where they want to be as a Christian, but it's really, what it really is, is, is sitting back, trusting in God, you know, um, uh, believing that God is, is working on the inside of you and cooperating with him. And, and not trying to, you know, insert yourself to try to do something that 
only the Holy Spirit can do. You, the Holy Spirit produces the fruit, not you. You cooperate with the Holy Spirit by believing and trusting in Him. Now, as we give the Spirit more control of our lives, as we give the Spirit more control of our lives, He begins to do in and through us what only He can do to shape us and to grow us to look like Jesus Christ. Now, I, I, again, I want to get a little picky here. You know, I, I said this, as we give the Spirit more control, but it is said this way in most religious church, you will see people always asking God for more. Oh, God, give me more of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. I just need more of the Holy Ghost. Give me more of God. I just want more of God. You don't, you, listen, when you got God, you got all the God you need. You got all of them. And here's the deal. It's, it's never you needing more of God. It's always, uh, you know, you giving more of yourself. Uh, to God, not more of God, but giving more of yourself. We give the Spirit more control of our lives. So the real issue is, as you look at your life and you look at the fruit of the Spirit and the character of your life, are you giving more control to God or are you going around begging God for more of Him? You, 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 no, He needs more of you. God needs more of you. How much more of you do you need to, be, to, to begin to give to God? How much more? You know, I, I look at this principles of, of yielding to the Holy Spirit. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, it, now this is kind of like, you know, driving in traffic. You know, the yield sign. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, that simply means you stop and let this car go in front of you, and then you follow the car. Well, that's what it means when you yield to the Holy Spirit. You stop, you let the Holy Spirit go in front of you, and you follow the Holy Spirit. I think that's what we need to begin to do. I, I think sometimes we don't pay attention to the yield sign, and we go ahead of the Holy Spirit, and we don't know where we're going. And if you're going to yield to the Holy Spirit, then you're going to stop, let Him go, and then you're going to follow Him. It is time for us, if we're going to see our character change, and if we're going to see godly character demonstrated by the fruit of the Spirit in our life, it's going to be because we made a decision to give more control of ourselves over to the Holy Spirit. We made a decision to say, Lord, we're going to give more of it to you. And, and that's just something that each Christian's got to evaluate. Do you find in your life that you need to give more control of your life to the Holy Spirit? Or are you satisfied with, no, I don't want the Holy Spirit to control my life. I want to control my own life. This is my life, and I can live it like I want it. I tell you what, it, it, may, it may challenge what the Holy Spirit's trying to do in producing the product of the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And so you got to make a decision right now. This is, this is the difference between mature and immaturity. Will you be willing to give more control of your life to the Holy Spirit, or are you keeping more control of your life with you and then hoping and praying that the Holy Ghost can just make you walk in the fruit of the Spirit? That's not how that works. That's not how that works. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse um, 18. I find this pretty fascinating. 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Let's look at that for a moment because uh, God does want to shape us and grow us to look like Jesus. He, he wants, but he's, he's, got to, he's going to be the one to do that. He says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. How? By the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord has accepted the responsibility of changing us into the same image of Jesus Christ. Is it possible that your struggles to succeed are due to issues with your character? Creflo Dollar thoroughly examines how our character can either hold us back or help us rise above in his series, Cultivating Godly Character. Character is doing what's right because it's right and then doing it right. Character is like a ceiling. You can't go past it. Whatever type of character you have determines the destination. So if you don't like your character, 
You got to go all the way back to what you've been exposing yourself to that caused you to think that way, that caused you to, to feel that way, that caused you to make the decisions that way, that caused you to act that way, that now created the habits that now create the character. These four insightful messages can change your life today for a love gift of only 25 US dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore or call the number on your screen to grab your copy today. Get ready to renew your mind and spirit at the 2021 Grace Life Conference. Join Creflo Dollar. Your mind needs to be renewed with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the New Testament covenant of grace. And Taffy Dollar. God wants to secure our life. He wants us to trust in him and believe that he's able to secure us. Trust God for the goodness and you can be the advantage. You can give the advantage. For this year's conference that will leave you transformed by the word of God. Streaming online worldwide, July 15th through the 16th, 10 a.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Eastern. Learn more at gracelife-conference.org and register now by texting Grace Life to 51555. This is an experience that you don't want to miss. So text Grace Life right now to 51555 to register or visit gracelife-conference.org. The Bible teaches us to give generously with a cheerful heart, not out of necessity, but out of a cheerful heart. And that's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision. You know that when people understand grace, they're empowered to change their lives for the better. Thank you for supporting us with your financial donations. And every time you give, you're being used by God to stop misfortune in someone else's life. And for that, we say thank you. God bless you. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. Looking for a deeper understanding of the Word? Join us for service every Sunday at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, no matter where you are. Everything in your life is determined by your thinking. If you change your thinking, you change your life. And you have to change your thinking to be in line with the one who created you. No walls, no limits. Join believers from all over the world as we grow in grace. You've got to get the specific word to think on, and that's the word of grace, the gospel of grace. Set your reminder, invite a friend, and join a worldwide audience of believers. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or text Watch Now to 51555 for more information about our services and streaming times. Be a part of church without walls. See you online. Thank you, partners and friends, 